as far as I know, Jamaica is a democratic country. As far as I know, the constitution of Jamaica affords its citizens the opportunity to speak freely as long as they are not breaking any rules of engagement and becoming libelous. Also, as far as I am aware, that any Jamaican with the necessary tools and intention can do a little research, put one or a few together and ask some questions. Apparently, that is not allowed anymore. I am starting to get a vibe from certain people that the moment you oppose mining in the cockpit country, you will become enemy of the state. But me have a warning for them people there. I will not stop addressing the cockpit. When I'm looking at the camera, the cockpit country situation. And who want vex, vex. And who want boss, boss. My platform was designed and created to be a voice for some people whose voice is not as loud as mine is. Because they don't have a platform like mine to voice their concerns. Day before yesterday, I did a video entitled The Cockpit Country versus the Government. I did the video outlining some of the things that I think are facts in relation to the cockpit country. As the resistance to bauxite mining in the cockpit country ramps up and the public discourse and displeasure increases, here are a few more noteworthy facts to bear in mind. The first one, on November the 21st, 2017, during a presentation in Parliament on the proposed cockpit country boundary, Prime Minister Andrew Wallace referred to the boundary identified by Dr. Paris Loyi Jr. in 2005 because this man name now is the center of contention and we soon get to that so dr paris Louis, brilliant brilliant gentleman no questions asked brilliant was one of the persons who would have established a boundary for the cockpit country his boundary is in red that has come um, to be known as the Huey boundary in november november the 21st 2017 the prime minister during an address to parliament, declared that the cockpit country protected area would be the boundary as established by Dr. Paris Loyi Jr. Prime Minister Andrew Wallace declared that approximately 74,726 hectares had been demarcated as the designated cockpit country protected area. Those are the eight boundaries. Fox. See the eight of them, don't call the line there. See? Now, the problem is, of all the eight boundaries, the one that was established by Dr. Paris Louis Jr. was the smallest. And subsequently, that was the boundary that was used by the government as the cockpit country protected area. I now question the capabilities of Dr. Paris Louis Jr. As I said, as far as I know, he's an absolutely brilliant individual. So the smallest of the eight boundaries was accepted by the government as the one where they are going to use. The government of Jamaica issued some six special mining lease. Anyway, you see SML, that means special mining lease. Both six of them. Noranda, which is the company at the center of the whole mining situation, said the mining leases granted to it covers approximately 8,000. 300 hectares. The government of Jamaica is the 51% majority stakeholder in Noranda Bauxite Company. So I mean, say so any man in Wagwan, the government of Jamaica will get 51% of any profit made. So the government won 51 of Noranda Bauxite partners. Remember that, you know. So the government has a vested interest in mining done by Noranda. Don't lose sight of that, you know, peeps. The mining leases were designed, as far as my information suggests, by a single individual 
to include all bauxite laden property and exclude non bauxite lands. A 2017 special mining lease for a sector 172 grants around the Jamaica bauxite partners right to mine into communities such as Gibraltar, Madras, and Endeavour. Communities that have long been known to be a part of the cockpit country. By leaving out the northeastern, which is a big old purple line, a blue line, a red line, by leaving out the northeastern and down here, so we have. SEPL 541 and the southwest section there which are important for hydrology and history and where mining and prospecting leases have already been issued. It is hard to not conclude that sections of the CCPA boundary have been drawn to satisfy already contracted mining interests. Even more alarming is the special mining lease 173 in a blue year so yes we 173 there even more alarming is Special Mining Lease 173, which would allow Noranda to mine an even larger portion of the cockpit country. This lease is currently under an environmental impact assessment process. Why was a mining lease granted for 173 before an environmental impact assessment was carried out? Beats me. Also of note is that the United Nations Development Program has funded a project titled Conserving Biodiversity and Reducing Land Degradation in the Cockpit Country to the tune of US $6 million. So there's a project to conserve biodiversity and reduce land degradation in the cockpit country. So if there is such a project that is being spearheaded by the government, why then is mining even on the agenda in the cockpit country? I don't know, I don't get I came across an article written by a person named Liver and White that was posted in the Sunday Gleaner or posted in the Gleaner because Robert Nestor Morgan which is this fellow he is a senator for the Jamaica Labour Party and he is the cabinet secretary he has been the one fighting the fight for the prime minister on social media read the cockpit country I mean him I do him job after I did the fact video I, I tweeted I, I, I posted a tweet on social on Twitter and in that tweet I said, the tweet said, I would be most happy to engage Robert Nesta Morgan and Matthew Samuda. Matthew Samuda is another um, senator, he's Carl Samuda's son, in a civil and frank discussion re the cockpit country protected era. I tagged them in the thing. Robert Nesta Morgan replied, and in his reply, he said, Sure, anytime you are ready. So I said, sounds good. Any preference in format, a live stream via Skype call or a traditional sit-down interview. He's in San Andreas on some government mission. So I reached out back to him via direct message. And I asked him, are you available for a live stream tomorrow at 6 p.m.? Which would have been yesterday, I think. He says, I am overseas with poor data. I said, okay, let me know when you're back on the island. That was Tuesday. Yesterday evening now, after reading an article, I came across something that jumped out at me in the article written by, by one, Lynn Vern Wright, Call for Transparency on the Cockpit Country. In that article, which Robert Nestor Morgan commented on, and he said, the writer seems consumed with insulting his targets than focusing on the important issues to be discussed. Filled with glaring inaccuracies, the article does not really improve the noise because the article that was, that was written by Nestor Morgan was titled Beyond the Noise of the Cockpit Country. That was his title. Well, that was the title the Gleaner used. It says, our pension for personal attacks undermines consensus. So apparently now, everybody who speaks on the cockpit country, I attack them, I attack people. That is what me I get from this. Then when I was reading, so this is a gentleman that wrote the article, apparently. Zane, he says he's a, a resident of the cockpit country. He said, our contention, Mr. Morgan, because he was responding directly to the article penned by Mr. Morgan. Our contention, Mr. Morgan, is that the process of determining these boundaries was not transparent. 
Jamaica must know that at least five or six different groups had determined boundaries for the cockpit country. Therefore, it is important for transparency that we get a clear outline of the criteria that led to choosing Paris Louis Jr.'s vision of the boundary. We expect you and the Prime Minister to answer some questions that would help to clarify the process. Here are some things we are concerned about. Given that Paris Louis Jr. is the son to Paris Louis Sr., who was head of the Jamaica Bauxite Institute for many years, this box me in my face. I mean, I say, hold on, man. I read it again. Now. He says, given that Paris Louis Jr. is the son to Paris Louis Sr., who was head of the Jamaica Bauxite Institute for many years, would it matter if the country understood the objective measure and the parameters he used to determine the borders alluded to by the Prime Minister? What were the criteria used to determine that his chosen border was in the best interest of sustainability? Then I say, whoa, what do you mean? This sound interesting. So I did nothing more than googled Paris Louis Senior. I don't know much about him. I know about his son. Because the reality, peeps, is that the work that his son has done is work that I am familiar with and is work that I admire. Being somebody who is into geography and geology and environmental study and things, seeing his work is excellent. So I know about him. But his father now, the one that kind of threw me out. So being any sensible person who come across this and who is against mining in the cockpit country, I decided to do some research. And in my research, it came out that a couple more questions should be asked. So now, I decided that I go, me go, me, me need to point this out. Because how come you not hear nobody mention this before? How come this has not been spoken before? And I think that this is something that needs to be addressed. So I decide to address it. So I decided to now do a video. And the video, I was not stating categorically anything, you know. I was simply asking questions. The title of the video, Cockpit Country Conspiracy Slash Family Affair Question Mark. So this was the script for the video. Was there a conspiracy involving father and son in the establishment of the UE boundary of the cockpit country protected area? Let's have a look, shall we? That was the intro for the video. We know now that the Dr. Paris Louis Jr.'s 2005 boundary, more popularly called the UE boundary, is the boundary that was declared on November 21st, 2017 as the boundary for the cockpit country protected air. But is there a conflict of interest knowing that Louis's father headed the Jamaica Bauxite Institute for many years and is also, or was also, I'm not sure, a board member of Noranda Bauxite Mining Partners? Wouldn't there be a conflict of interest there? So that is, is, is a simple question that. Why is it that somebody who obviously look at something and see a possible connection asking questions such a bad thing? Well, I'm soon telling you how, how bad this situation has gotten you know, peeps. This brilliant young man, Paris Louis Jr., is the son of this brilliant older man, Paris Louis Senior. This gentleman here was the head of the Bauxite Institute at one point in time, possibly up to 2017 when the boundary was declared. A boundary that was established by his son. He was not only head of the Bauxite Institute, but he, by all accounts, was a member of the board of directors for Naranda Bauxite Mining Partners, the same company where we um, dig out the cockpit country. Ask me, I say, I am not the most brilliant person alive. Never have been, never will be. But me pay attention when me dog at school. And something 
as interesting as that, couldn't miss me. So I did the research. He was also a member of the board of directors of the Bauxite Institute, Naranda Jamaica Bauxite Mining Partners, and was still on the board of directors of the Mona Geoinformatics Institute, which was headed by his son, who was and is still the director. I went on in the video to say, Mr. Luai Sr.'s contribution to Jamaica's bauxite industry has been acknowledged by the government of Jamaica, which conferred on him the order of distinction in the rank of officer class OD in 1988 and the order of distinction in the rank of commander class CD in 2007. I am not sure how involved Luai Sr. is at the moment with the Jamaica Bauxite Institute or Noranda Jamaica Bauxite Mining Partners these days. But this is a question that must be asked. This is the question I ask. Me never said this man do that. You know? I ask simple questions. Was the decision to accept the UE boundary? Zane, was the decision to accept the UE boundary, which is this boundary in red, outlined by Paris Louis Jr. as the cockpit country protected area this year, so in any way influenced by the fact that his father, this man here, so was not only executive director of the Jamaica Bauxite Institute, but also a member of the board of directors for Noranda Jamaica Bauxite Mining Partners. It's a simple question. Again, the question said. Was the decision to accept the Huey boundary outlined by this brilliant young man here, so Paris Louis Jr., as the cockpit country protected area boundary in any way influenced by the fact that his father was not only the executive director of the Jamaica Bauxite Institute, but also a member of the board of directors for Noranda Bauxite Mining Partners. No, you tell me what is so wrong with that question. You tell me what is so wrong for pointing out the relation between these two gentlemen where a possible conflict of interest against the Jamaican people exists. Now, remember, before I did this video, Senator Robert Nesta Morgan agreed to discuss the cockpit country situation with me. Anytime you're ready was his comments. I also give you an outline of the engagement after that. Him say, him not in the island, where him they know, bad Wi-Fi they there. So, boom, when you come country, when you come back into the country. Now, before I came on, I got a tweet from one Robert Nesta Morgan. And this is what he said. So my last tweet to him was, Okay, let me know when you are back on the island. Today at 1.46 p.m., he replied saying, You launched a personal attack on Paris and wish to speak to me? Nope. Sorry. First thing, Mr. Robert Nesta Morgan. I never come in your yard, come ask to speak to your family. I tweeted and I tagged you in the tweet asking for somebody who has been championing the cockpit country situation on social media to engage you in what I said is a civil and frank discussion on the cockpit country to which you agreed but you have now reneged on your promise to discuss a matter of national importance with somebody who you claim personally attacked Somebody who may be a friend of yours. Him say, you launched a personal attack. Everything that was in that video I read for you just now. All I simply did was to ask questions. Mr. Robert Nesta Morgan. When in Jamaica's history did it become illegal to ask questions about things of national importance? When in Jamaica's history did it become a crime? To establish a possible link and a conflict of interest against the Jamaican people. So you now, sir, has decided 
that you won't speak to me because I have attacked Paris. But the Jamaican people, the people of Chilani, St. Anne, St. Elizabeth, and St. James, I will continue to be their voices. So I responded, because we don't grow like fool around here. My question to him was, so it is a crime to ask questions. How was that a personal attack? I thought you were a servant of the people. And you see how long I sit down and I watch the cockpit country situation. And people, people I said, teach, oh, you not address cockpit country yet. Oh, you not address cockpit country yet. And I sit down and I watch, I listen, and I read until me ready, you know. And I take my time, I do my research, and I address the thing. But you know what I'm going to do, you know? They might push me for God dig some more. Because this man, who is a senator, who is the secretary of the cabinet, the cabinet secretary, is being paid by taxpayers' money. He is accountable to taxpayers. Mr. Robert Nesta Morgan is not accountable to himself. He's accountable to the people of Jamaica. He's accountable to the people of Jamaica, I should say. My respect, I remember him say, you launched a personal attack. How did I launch a personal attack on Paris Louis Jr.? Did I come on here to call Paris Louis a criminal? Did I accuse him of anything being criminal? All I simply asked was, was there in any way a situation where the boundary was influenced by the fact that Paris's father was once head of the Jamaica Bauxite Institute and a member of the Naranda board. How is that a personal attack, Robert Nesta Morgan? His response was, it is called innuendo and called for and wrong. It is no wrong to question anything that the government has to say, is it? It is no wrong to have a voice. It is no wrong to stand up for something that you believe in that goes against the status quo and the moment the moment you address certain things you are accused of attacking persons personally a video simple asking questions about something that i find to be strange and concerning is a personal attack do better than that robert Am I to believe that based on the contents of that video, Robert Nesta Morgan is no longer interested in having a discussion? Because there may now be questions that he might have difficulties answering. Am I to believe that? Am I to believe that Jamaica's taxpayers' money are paying a political person? He is not an MP, but he is a senator. Zin and his cabinet secretary that really and truly only have a few persons interest at heart but not the entire country so him say it is called innuendo it is uncalled for and it is wrong i said it is called investigating and asking questions as far as i am concerned he said okay sir no problem and I said blessings. And that was that. Mr. Morgan. You know, me did have higher hopes than that for your family. Man, a big man level. We are say yes, here comes another young aspiring politician. Somebody who is fresh. Somebody who is different. Somebody who has a vision for the country. Somebody who is intent on serving the people of Jamaica serving the best interest not of a minority but of the majority of the entire nation your excuse is a lame excuse brother because me attack Paris you never talk to me about, about the cockpit country so apparently now Mr. Morgan probably went to do some research as to see who he was going to be speaking to I'm assuming say never did know before. So apparently now he realized say, this person is probably asking some questions when nobody else never asks. So me attack Paris. Me attack Paris. Paris who I think is the greatest geography mine in the country. As a geographer. 
me attack. Ah, me simple ask is was there a conflict of interest? But you can't speak. You can't speak against the establishment. And seeing that I did that video after he and I had agreed to to discuss the cockpit country situation, then one of them things still. But as I said before, as long as the cockpit country situation remains unresolved, as long as there is still an intent to mine areas that has been known for centuries as cockpit country, as long as the special mining lease is granted to Naranda Bauxite mining partners, of which the Jamaican government is 51% shareholder, are not retracted, I will continue to speak. I see some people under the video say, yo, be, care be careful of what? What do you mean be careful? If I see something that needs to be addressed, I address it. I don't care who gets offended. Do they care who is being offended when they're going to dig out the cockpit country? Do they care who will be dislocated? Do they really care as they say about the ideological, ecological, biological, geological health of the cockpit country? As they say. Why is there this great desire to mine the most ecologically sensitive area in the country? Whether near or alongside the and it or above it. Why? That's with the great intent. Look what them said the cockpit country protected area there. And look what special mining lease 173 there. I take on to take people for idiot. How was a special mining lease granted for 173 sector 173 without an environmental impact assessment done? So yes. I have not been trained into the whole mining and prospecting thing. But, but me no fool, brother. You can't tell me, say, if you geology of the cockpit country that the underground water supply will not be affected. Cockpit country is made up of karst limestone. Limestone is a permeable rock, meaning, say, it allows water to enter and pass through. And the permeability comes in two ways. Is it, it is either porous or it is pervious. Porous means that there are tiny spaces between the grains of the rock that allow water to enter and pass through. And perviosity means that there are vertical cracks or joints that allow waters to, water to infiltrate and percolate. So there is no way you can tell me that if you mine in SML172 that the green area will not be affected. Imagine if you mine a 173. Oh no, come on man. People are so fool again man. And again. The cockpit country would have taken thousands of years to develop the distinctive landscape that is present in the cockpit country. And for a few years, we are going to ravage what has taken thousands of years for a couple million US dollars. That can't make no sense. And then when you talk about it, you are attack people. Attack which people? What about the people them want to attack down, down a Chilani family? What about the people them were born and grew in the Alps and Ulster Spring and Indian Town and Larry Mears and Mahogany Hall? Peeps, I don't stop talking about it. And if, if, if Paris Louis Jr. or Cena feel offended, then so be it. I ask a simple question. Was there a conflict of interest? Based on the dynamics of the situation. Based on other things. It's a simple question. What's hard in asking one question? Like me see from the other day, you know, some people I get very, very heated when they attack, you know. No humility, you know. Everybody is on our attack part. And nobody not supposed to talk about them. Nobody not supposed to talk to them. This man was supposed to be a servant of the country. Come and tell me about saying not nah, talk to me because me me, they, I, 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 I did a personal attack on Paris. All man, I, I tried to. You have been the most vocal person, really, cockpit country from the government side. Even more vocal than the Prime Minister himself. I know you all tell me, say, you not talk about cockpit country can me attack Paris and me have innuendo. What kind of innuendo? What do you mean? What wrong with the questions I ask? It's a crime to ask questions in Jamaica. In relation to the governing Jamaica Labour Party, you know, probably realize eh, this a vlogger yeah, is not like the regular vloggers them. This a vlogger yeah, yeah, that thought the things them as them is. Not go around corner, no pretense, no friend thing in a this. We no politician, we not no politician friends. So when we address a thing in a matter if you're orange or you're green, we are gonna address the situation, family. 
teach them. Hey, yo, hello. Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment below. Remember to like and share the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. Follow me on social media and check out the suggested videos on screen. This is Teach saying, until next time, walk good, my friends.